Let's talk about this incredible NASA Europa Clipper. It's the most ambitious science project ever conceived. The mission is to investigate an icy moon of Jupiter to determine if life could exist. It's set to launch in 2024. And in the meantime, author and acclaimed science journalist David Brown has written about this extraordinary journey. It's the journey that really could determine if life exists elsewhere in the solar system. It's great to have you on the show, David. It's great to be here. Thank you. you wrote, you've you been working on this book for seven years. Is that right? Seven years, yeah. yeah. And I had no idea when I started the project it would take that long. And really, if I had known, I probably would have run cowering and screaming in the other direction. Yeah. <laughs> well, give everybody an overview of this unbelievable undertaking. So the mission is about a small team of scientists and engineers who spent the last 20 years trying to convince NASA to fly spacecraft to Europa, which is Jupiter's ocean moon. Um, uh, the, the mission reveals the inside turmoil at NASA to get this mission flying. Europa matters uh, because it has a liquid saltwater ocean beneath an ice crust. So it's about the size of our moon, but there's three times more water on Europa than there is on the planet Earth. And, and when I say water, I don't mean some weird scientist definition of water that's technically water. I mean like real salt water. You mm-hmm. could put a cup in it, you could drink it, and it wouldn't be healthy for you, but your body would know what to do with it. And a consequence of that is it's the most likely place in the solar system beyond Earth to harbor life. And not just single-celled organisms, but conceivably complex life. Maybe fish, maybe sea monsters. All kinds of creatures. And it's very interesting since... It's been a very stable environment for so many millions of years. There's a lot of interesting things that could happen down there. I mean, because unlike other places where things have to start over after some catastrophe, it hasn't happened there. Uh, is, am I putting that into the proper perspective? You are exactly correct. So the Earth itself has suffered multiple extinction-level events, some of which have sterilized the surface of the planet. Um, Europa has had four billion years, uh, that ocean, to develop life. And it, to, to the best of anyone's knowledge, it's never experienced an extinction-level event. So if life took hold a long time ago, um, it's very likely that that life would be highly evolved um, and very complex. And unlike all life that we know on the planet Earth, in fact, all life that we know, period, which comes from a common origin, right? It comes from a single ancestor eons ago, um, Europa would have had its own genesis, its own life-creating event, and its own point of evolution for everything going forward. Mm -hmm. And that presents some interesting questions and quandaries when we talk about life totally unrelated to that of Earth. Um, Whenever I eat a fish at a restaurant, my ancestors, you know, won the right to eat that fish, right? We, We earned our place in the food chain. But if you had a fish from a, say, an alien ocean that's unrelated to Earth. How would you even characterize that? Is that still an animal? Is that is that equal to Earth, to human? What does that mean? So it's a fun it's fun to think about, but it's the actual reality that we're going to be living in the years ahead. You're so right. You're so right. By the way, David Brown, you might have read some of his nonfiction work uh, frequently in the Atlantic, the New Yorker, the New York Times, also Scientific American, Vox, Smithsonian. Uh, his new book is called The Mission, about this mission that is set to uh, launch, you say, about 2025, hopefully? Yeah, I would say plus or minus six months. It depends on the availability of a rocket to launch it, but it'll be ready to go by then, certainly. It's yeah. under construction right now. And it's interesting, obviously, because of all the radiation, humans can't land, but robots can. So this is a robot mission. Correct. This is basic. That's right. Yeah. Explain the, the, some of the things that a robot can do on this mysterious place. Of course. So, um, you, you, Jupiter has what's called the Jovian radiation belt. Um, if you look in the night sky and you see our full moon, um, if you look at Jupiter, it just, it's just a dot in the sky. But if you could see its radiation. Uh, Jupiter would be three times, it would be the size of three full moons. It would be enormous in the night sky. It would dominate the sky. It would be bigger than the sun during the day. Um, 
a consequence of this radiation belt is, of course, enormous radiation, and Europa exists in the center of it. It just it just marinates in in, in radiation. And when I say radiation, to give you an idea of how much, it's the conditions are very similar to the immediate aftermath of a detonated thermonuclear bomb. Uh, people would never want to walk on Europa, not with technology in the conceivable future. But robots can. Um, you can build uh, radiation-hardened spacecraft. Uh, you can build radiation-hardened landers. And you can explore Europa inventively in such ways that um, it can survive the radiation. In the case of what I write about in the mission, uh, the spacecraft that they ultimately settled on is called Europa Clipper. And rather than orbit Europa and just marinate in that in that horrible radiation, it orbits Jupiter. Mm -hmm. And it encounters Europa multiple times, each in a different orientation. Each time it passes Europa, it gets a new strip of the world, a new strip of new images, new data, and all that. And over time, it can build a 360-degree view of that world without having to orbit it. And that speaks to the to the inventiveness of the engineers and the scientists to come up with this sort of concept and to make it a reality. And how deep into the ocean can they observe by doing that? If, you know, to see these creatures, if there are any in underwater, I mean, without landing, how deep can they look in that ocean? Sure. They're going to use um, ice penetrating radars, um, the same kind that were developed um, to study the bottom of Antarctica, to see where Antarctica touches the ocean, to see where Antarctica sits on a continent. Um, so East, Eastern Antarctica exists on a continent, I'm going to say about the size of uh, Australia, mm -hmm. and Western Antarctica is basically draped over a couple of islands, kind of like the, the Polynesian islands, but it's just ice on top. And they developed this sort of ice-penetrating radar technology to study what's going on at the bottom of Antarctica so we can understand rapid sea level rise here. And the ice ocean interface, where water touches ice on Europa, is going to be an important place to understand because that's an incredible food web there. That's where a lot. That's a whole ecosystem right there. Mm. If you if you stand in Antarctica, the surface of the of Antarctica, it's so beautifully pristine white. It's the, the whitest thing you've ever seen, as far as the eye can see. But if you look under the ice, it's just sludge. It's gunk. It's disgusting. But the, that sludge and that disgustingness, that's creatures, that's life. And the same thing would likely exist um, on Europa. So they're, they're going to be going to be looking into that, um, and they're going to be determining habitability. Where could life best exist in Antar or, or Where could by life best exist on Europa? And they would eventually send a, a subsequent lander that would go down and scrape in that area. And 10 centimeters below the ice, you're protected from radiation. So that's about where you would find evidence of things that once wiggled. Interesting. So sending spacecraft to do that. You know. Yeah. So the uh, now what would be, what's the temperature? Could anything if it wasn't for the ra radiation, what what would be the what's the normal temperature? Oh, hundreds below zero. It, it's uh, it's quite cold on the surface. The the there, there's no the, the atmosphere of Europa is about one trillionth of the atmosphere of Earth. So. Um, Basically, to stand on the surface of Europa is to stand in space itself. So it's not—it's um, certainly not a place that that any creatures that that I would like to meet uh, huh. exist. Yeah. They would be hardy and, and mean indeed. Yeah. So that's interesting. And why are they? Is it because of the salt water that makes them think that maybe possibly some life down there? What are the other conditions that make it so ideal? So, in order to have life, you need um, three things. You need water, which, um, which Europa has in abundance. You need organics, um, so carbon, uh, uh, nitrogen, hydrogen, and so on, oxygen. Um, and you need chemical energy, right? So the bottom of Europa's ocean sits on a bed of rock. And when you have water touching rock, you're able to get interesting chemistry. And Europa has one more thing that works in its favor for life. Just as at the bottom of our ocean, we have what are called hydrothermal vents. Mm -hmm. it's, wa it's hot water and nutrients blasting into the bottom of our ocean. Sometimes they're called black smokers here on Earth. Um, Europa has the same thing. Um, it, they work slightly differently, but they do have those hydrothermal vents blasting that hot water, blasting those nutrients into the ocean. So when you have the water, you have the organics, you have the chemistry, you have all the ingredients you need for life to take hold. And Europa's had one more thing working in its favor. It's had time. Scientists think that you need about 500 million years for life to take hold. 
and Europa have had four billion years. That's so, so interesting. It's, it could be quite exciting down there. Yeah, yeah. The book is The Mission, David W. Brown. It's great talking to you. You really put it into words, and, and, and wow, what a, what a real undertaking. The book is uh, spectacular, really. Thank you very much for being on the Alan Handelman Show. Thank you for having me.